were telling me once that, like, you came out for pregame kicks, and you're like, what are we trying to kick here? It feels like I'm kicking like an icebox. Yeah, Jeff Fiegel's, you know, we typically do about eight kicks on each side, nine. And um, after our fourth kick, he couldn't catch the ball. And, and so I just said, look, you know what? And he was the holder. And he was the holder. And so um, I, I just said, look, let's just quit. Let's we're just... Gonna, yeah, you just we're going to have to, you know, it's going to stink. <laughs> it's going to suck all day. I said, I don't want you to get bad vibes about not being able to catch the ball. So we get we got four in. And I said, we're good. And same thing when he went to punt. He could only punt, you know, five or six balls because he couldn't catch the ball until he had to go get his hands warm again. So, Because how cold was it? Mraz, can you check the temperature on that game? I mean, it was just wind ridiculous. Wind chill was minus 27, 28. Minus 27 <clears throat> wind chill, January um, Green Bay. I think game day, like, just normal temperature was minus one or two, but it, there was a pretty good breeze all night. And um, it was the late game, right? So that it was was it was it Sunday like five o'clock, six o'clock, something like that. Yeah. Six thirty Eastern, five thirty Central. Yeah. So it got real dark real quick. Yeah. So just you know, just overall, and, and and the Packers were the same way. I don't think their holders could could really hold as many balls as they normally would. So um, we just had to embrace it. They were going to play in it. We were going to play in it, and and so we just kind of ran with it. You said when you first went out there, though, you were like, whoa, this is cold. Like, we got I got to dress a little differently, right? It was, it, yeah, it was, you know, you had layer. For me, I can't layer up because I don't want to restrict my leg movements and stuff like that. I did have one extra layer of, like, thermals underneath my pants. But, like, socks and all that stuff, you, you can't double up or triple up, to, you know. So, so during that game, man, you are so mentally resilient because you missed two kicks. Yep. And... It's cold, and it's freezing, and it's up and down. It looked like the Giants had won on that Ahmad Bradshaw touchdown run called back in a hold. You go to overtime. Everybody goes, oh, overtime, Lambo, Brett Favre, Giants are toast. Corey Webster picks off Brett Favre, his final pass ever as a Packer. You guys get the ball back, and then the drive stalls. And on fourth down, instead of going for it, you don't even allow Tom Coughlin to make that decision. You're just going to go right out there and kick the field goal. Yeah, you know, I had hit, I had missed a 43-yarder with about eight minutes left, going the same direction, and and I hit it really well. I just, I just didn't make it. It just missed left a little bit, but that gave me a lot of confidence for that kick. I, I knew I could make the 47-yarder. It's interesting. A miss <clears throat> gave you confidence. Yeah, and you can learn a lot. I mean, you learn more from your mistakes and, than you do your successes. So I, I hit the ball really well. I, for me, it was a distance thing. I was like, I know I could get it there, and so, uh, I ran out there. I look around, there's no snapper, there's no holder. I'm looking over there. Tom <laughs> Tom and Jeff are having some sort of discussion. And Tom, I guess I, I gave him the uh, the positive vibes that I'm out here, let's go. And he kind of shooed Jeff on and, and Jay Alford, who was our D tackle slash long snapper. Because at that point, Coughlin's deciding whether to go for it or to try another field. Yeah, I, I mean, it, there's a lot of people telling him not to kick it. Uh, upstairs, you know, in his headset. Offensive coordinator, special Probably, team coordinator. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, and, and I get it because you don't want to give him the ball there if we we just miss. But um, I had all the confidence in the world. Uh, you know, the last snap and hold was not the greatest. I don't w ever want to be that guy and say that's why I missed it. But in those conditions, the one at the very end of regulation, it, if it's not perfect, I mean, it, it, it's tough to make them. So, and Jay offered first year snapping. I mean, he was a D tackle. He was a rookie. Yeah, I mean, Jay Alford had a sack in the Super Bowl and snapped a field goal in the Super Bowl. How crazy. Probably the first player in NFL history to ever do that. So, Jay was kind of forced into that role when our snapper got hurt. And, and God bless him, he did a great job all year. And um, we didn't have a lot of work during the season. We didn't get a lot of work together, which was different for me. I used to always have my snapper with me. But, uh, man, he came through and threw a strike. Uh, and, and Feigs got it down, and, and we made it. You stroke it. Going to the Super Bowl, and you, the first person that you embrace is, is Tom Coughlin, right? You run right over there, right? No, I ran right off the field. Oh, you ran, that's right. Right off yes. the field, finger in the air, number Gosh. one, boom into I the tunnel. Out. Yeah, and I was, <laughs> man, I just wanted Hit the walk off. To, yeah, I wanted to get off the field. I mean, it, it, it was miserable. I mean, I'm not going to, every time I think about that game, I actually get cold. It, it's Really? Yeah, and, and you talk to some of the guys. <laughs> some of the guys still got limbs and stuff that they can't feel. They're just permanently numb seriously yeah. from that game fingers or you know I, i've talked to guys that said they still have numbness in certain places from wow that game. 